ketiol actually is very important because it helps the entire lamina to hold itself to the leaf base for that ketiol is very very important venation is nothing but the arrangement of veins in the leaves is called as venation now there are two types of venation parallel venation and reticulate venation there will be a common point in the ketiol from which the leaf will be attached like this so therefore it is palmately compound leaf everyone a warm welcome to the session on first pc biology i'm dr divya biology faculty vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysore so in the session let us learn about the leaf under chapter 5 that is morphology of flowering plant so let's learn the structure of leaf the arrangement of leaf and the different types of leaves that are there and then move into learning some of the mcqs under this particular topic So, talking about the leaf. So, we had learned in the previous session wherein we studied the below ground part of the plant, that is the root, and the above ground part, that is the stem. And I told you in the stem, that is in the nodal region, the leaf arises. So, let's study about it in detail. So, leaf, how does it look? It is generally a flattened structure which is completely flat both at the dorsal side and the ventral side. Therefore. it is a flattened structure and leaves are usually born on the stem especially at the nodal region of the stem and also wherever a bud arises in the nodal region there also the leaves can arise and this axillary bud that is there it later develops into a branch so from the nodal region the leaf can also arise the flower buds can also arise and also the branches can also arise now these regions are called as the axillary bud region because they are present between a axis they are present here that is here in an axis so that is a reason and there lots of meristemat actively dividing meristematic cells will be there which will develop into the leaves the flowers flowers and the branches as well and the leaves usually originate from the apical shoot apical meristem which is called as sam shoot apical meristem that is at the tip of the shoot or at the tip of the axis wherever there is the nodes there at the tip of the nodes there the leaf usually arises and as i told you those meristematic cells which are present in the shoot are called as the shoot apical meristem and it is from the shoot apical meristem the leaves arises and there only actively dividing meristematic cells will be there and leaves are one of the most important vegetative part of the plant because they are the ones which contain cells having lots of parenchyma in them that is the chloranchyma cells they have lots of chloranchyma cells inside which chloroplast are there and that chloroplast helps in photosynthesizing and that is one of the main function of the leaf which helps the plant to synthesize food using the sun's energy therefore they are the most important vegetative organs for photosynthesis like talking about the parts of a leaf so the parts of the leaf is divided into three the leaf is actually divided into three parts which is the leaf base the petiole and the lamina so leaf base the region from the where the leaf arises that region or the node on the stem from which the leaf arises exactly where the petiole connects that is called as the leaf blade so say for example here the stem is there this will form the leaf base so it has the leaf base then it has the petiole this is the stipule so this is the stipule it has the petiole it has a stipule then the entire leaf it is called as the lamina it is it has the lamina so talking about the leaf base so leaf base a leaf is attached to the stem so the region where the leaf is attached to the stem it is called as the leaf base next talking about this petiole so at the lateral region of the stem you can see right from the or the stipules right from the base of the petiole you can see two leaf like structures reduced leaf like structures which are also green in color arising and they are called as the stipules next talking about the pulvinus so pulvinus so some of the leaves that is the dicot leaves you can find the leaf bases which are swollen so at the base of the leaf 
there will be a swelling like this. So, if this is the stem, their leaf base, there will be a swelling and then the petiole will arise. So, this swelling we can call it as the pulvinus. It is called as pulvinus. Not all usually leguminous plants will have pulvinus that is their tip of the petiole or the base of their leaf will be swollen. It is called as pulvinus. And next part is the petiole. So, this portion is called as the petiole. So, petiole is long and slender and this petiole actually is very important because it helps the entire lamina to hold itself to the leaf base for that petiole is very very important and apart from that petiole is also important so that the petiole is long and slender it will allow the leaf to sway in the air or move in the air like this therefore taking in fresh air into the leaf so that the leaves will get necessary carbon dioxide and can release the oxygen so taking in fresh air also the petiole will help so it allows the leaf blade to flutter or it allows the lamina to flutter in the wind therefore cooling the leaf surface and also bringing in fresh air to the leaf surface that is why they say in front of a house we need to have a garden wherein there are plants having long petioles and lengthy leaves or large leaves or large lamina or large leaf blade so this can also be called as the leaf blade next is the lamina or the leaf blade so the entire expanded green part of the leaf is called as the lamina and the leaf blade and it is in this lamina we can find venation that is the midrib which is the most prominent vein and from the midrib lot of veins and veinlets will develop so that is about the lamina or the leaf blade and lamina is one of the important part of the leaf because it acts as a channel that is it is a storage region for the leaf and also the midrib and the veins they act as channels for transporting food minerals and waters to different parts of the leaf so that is their function next is the midrib as i told you midrib is the most prominent vein so the center one which is the most prominent one this entire vein is called as the midrib and it the midrib actually is very very important because it holds the lamina or it gives strength to the fragile lamina or the leaf blade so that is about the midrib next talking about venation now we know about the midrib we know the parts of the leaf we know about the veins and all that what is venation venation is nothing but the arrangement of veins in the leaves is called as venation now there are two types of venation parallel venation and reticulate venation parallel venation are always seen in monocot leaves like that is the grasses wheat rice and all that reticulate venation is seen in dicots that is the beans sunflower all that comes under dicot so reticulate the veinlets form a network if you can see here there is the most prominent vein that is the midrib so from the midrib actually veins will arise and from these veins lots of veinlets will arise so therefore it will lead to a network of arrangement of veins and such network of arrangement of veins is called as reticulate venation and this reticulate venation is one of the most characteristic for you to distinguish between a dicot and monocot because reticulate venation is seen only in dicotyledonous plants next talking about parallel venation so here the veins run parallelly that is they will not have midrib and all that entire veins will start to run parallel to one another in the leaves that is called as parallel venation and the parallel venation is seen in monocotyledonous plants that is sugarcane in uh, grasses bamboos and all that rice wheat all that you can find this parallel venation so this is about the venation next talking about the different types of leaves there are two types of leaves simple leaves and compound leaves so simple leaves means the lamina is entire if you can see here entire lamina is there lamina is entire and there is no incisions even though if incisions are there can you see there here incisions at the end they will not touch the or i can draw one more with incision say for example it will have incisions like this now this is also an entire leaf why because these incisions these are called as the incisions the grooves that you can see are called as the incisions so these incisions will not touch the 
midrib or it will not touch the midrib. If it had touched the midrib like this, they would form a leaflet. So that is the difference. So therefore, some leaves can have incisions. If they don't touch the midrib, it is also an entire leaf or a simple leaf. Next, talking about compound leaf. Here, the compound leaves, we can see the incisions of the lamina, they reach up to the midrib. So we have the entire midrib here, which is called as the rachis. It's called the rachis. And here, all the leaves, they will touch the midrib. So that kind of arrangement is called as compound leaves. Next in compound leaf, there are two types of compound leaves. That is pinnately compound and palmately compound. In pinnately compound, a number of leaflets, all these are called as the leaflets. So a number of leaflets will develop on the main rachis. So that is compound leaf. Next in or pinnately compound leaves. In palmately compound leaves, we have the petiole. All the leaves will start from a single point on the petiole. So all the leaflets. So these are the leaflets. They start from the tip of the petiole. Tip of petiole. And it looks like just like fingers on a palm, right? So that is why it is called as palmately compound leaves. So palmately compound leaves are commonly seen in silk, cotton, and uh, pinnately compound leaves are commonly seen in neem plants. Next, talking about phyllotaxy. What is phyllotaxy? Phyllotaxy is nothing but the arrangement of leaves. How the leaves are arranged on a plant, based on that, the leaves are of different types. That is alternate arrangement or alternate phyllotaxy, opposite phyllotaxy or world phyllotaxy. Alternate. Here you can see the petiole. One is here and the other one here. Here, here. This is alternate. So it will be like this. One leaf if it is here, the other one will be here. The other one here, here. So a single leaf arises on either side of this midrib or either side of the ratchets or the stem in an alternate manner. So that is called as alternate leaf arrangement. So they come in an alternate manner. Opposite means exactly opposite to each other. You can see here they are exact opposites. So it is if one leaf is here, the other one will be here, one here, the other one here. This is opposite leaf arrangement or opposite phyllotaxy. Next, world phyllotaxy, more than two leaves arise at a node. So, this is a nodal region because we know that nodes, it is from the nodes that the leaves usually arises. So, there are more than two leaves that are there which are arranged around a single node and therefore they look like a whorl. So that is called as world phyllotaxy and it is usually seen in Alstonia plants. So mustard, china rose and sunflower plants exhibit alternate phyllotaxy. Guava plants and calotropis, they exhibit opposite phyllotaxy and Alstonia exhibits world phyllotaxy. So this is about the arrangement of leaves which is called as phyllotaxy. So now we know about the leaf, its structure, the types of leaves, the arrangement of leaves and all that. So we shall look into some of the MCQs under this particular topic. The leaf is attached to the stem by lamina. No, lamina is nothing but the entire green surface or part of the leaf is called as the lamina. So that's not the right answer. Leaf blade, leaf blade is also same. Entire lamina is also called as leaf blade. Leaf base, Leaf base is actually the region or the base of the leaf that is where the petiole is attached that is called as the leaf base It is or the stipule. So stipule is actually below the leaf base if this is a leaf base small tiny leaf like structures will arise there that is called as the stipule. So this is a stipule so that is also not the right answer. The right answer here is leaf base because the leaf is attached to the stem at the leaf base. So this portion is called as the leaf base. So if this is the stem. So therefore option C is the right option here. The small leaf like structure at the base of leaf is called petiole. Now petiole is the lengthy portion of the lengthy stem or stalk of the leaf that helps to hold the lamina. It's the stipule because I told you wherever the leaf base is there small leaf like structures will arise which is called as the stipule. So right option B stipule. So bract and bracteole is also not the right answer here. 
Next, the swollen leaf base in legumes is called lamina. No, lamina is the entire portion of the leaf. Leaf blade is also the entire portion of the leaf. Pulvinus. Pulvinus is the right answer because I told you in the leaf base, somewhere where the petiole arises, there sometimes it will be swollen like this and then the leaf will form. So, this is the pulvinus. The swollen leaf base is called as the pulvinus. The right answer is pulvinus. Or they can ask the question like this. Pulvinus or swollen leaf base are found in dash. It is in legumes. Leguminous plants have pulvinous leaf base. It's not petiole because this is a petiole. Right answer is option C that is pulvinus. Next one. The leaf is attached to the node by lamina, stipule, midrib, petiole. The leaf is attached to the node. So if this is the stem and stem has nodes and internodes. So this is a node. This is also node. These in between the nodes we have the internodes leaf arises from the nodal region say for our example here and the leaf is attached to the node this leaf is attached to the node by petiole therefore the right answer here is option d petiole petiole is the right answer the green expanded part of leaf is called it's called lamina petiole it's not petiole it's not pulvinous it's not stipule why we have seen in the previous questions itself so the option here is option A, lamina. Reticulate venation is found in monocot leaf, dicot leaf, monocot stem, dicot stem. Venation is actually seen in leaves. It has nothing to do with the stem. So therefore the option is limited here to monocot leaf and dicot leaf. I told you in monocot leaf they have parallel venation wherein the veins are arranged in parallel to each other. In reticulate venation actually in dicot leaf they will have a midrib. And then they'll have veins and lots of veinlets like this, which will form a network. So therefore, it is in dicot that reticulate venation is seen. Therefore, the right option is option B. Now, if the question is parallel venation is found in, it is monocot leaf. So the option will be monocot leaf. Next question. Dash is a characteristic feature of monocot leaf. What is the question here? I have to find out which is the characteristic feature. So, reticulate venation, midrib, parallel venation, veins and veinlets. Reticulate venation, no, because it is found in dicot leaf. So, that's not the right answer. Midrib, they don't have a midrib. So, parallel venation, yes. And it's not veins and veinlets because veins and veinlets are seen in reticulate venation which is seen in dicot leaf. Now what was my question? Dash is a characteristic of monocot leaf. So parallel venation is a characteristic of monocot leaf. Next, leaves having an entire lamina are called simple leaves, compound leaves, spinately compound, palmately compound. It is simple leaf because compound leaves actually have their lamina which reaches the midrib therefore they form leaflets. So, it is not a compound leaves is not at all the answer. Of course, the two type of compound leaves are pinnately compound and palmately compound. So, that cannot be the answer. Leaves having an entire lamina are called simple leaves. Leaves having leaflets are called compound leaves. In, the, in that leaves having leaflets which arises from the tip of the petiole is called palmately compound leaves. And leaves having leaflets which reaches the entire which reaches midrib forming small small leaflets, it is, it is a pinnately compound leaves. Next question, ratches bearing leaflets are called dash leaves. So, which leaves have ratches? It is the compound leaves that have ratches. So, the right option here we have to select is the compound leaf. Leaves in which leaflets are attached to common point is called palmately compound because I told you there will be a common point in the petiole from which the leaves will be attached like this. So, therefore, it is palmately compound leaves. That is the right answer. The pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem are called compound taxonomy. Now, taxonomy is the classification of organism. Inflorescence is the arrangement of flowers in its floral axis. Not compound leaves, it is a type of leaf. The answer is phyllotaxy. The arrangement of leaves is called as phyllotaxy. Alstonia exhibits dash leaf arrangement, alternate simple opposite world. So, world, world leaf is seen by Alstonia. So, Alstonia wherein 
from the node several petioles will arise and they will bearing the leaves which will form a whorl like arrangement so that example is alstonia so therefore alstonia exhibits whorled leaf arrangement option d so this was about the session wherein we learned about the leaf its structure the parts of the leaf the types of leaves and all that and how leaves are arranged on a stem and we also learned some of the mcqs that can be framed under this particular topic so i hope you understood the session well we shall meet again in the coming session wherein we will study about the inflorescence and the flowers so see you in the next session along with discussion of its mcqs thank you